late news presented by the new Renault Clio. Everything you could wish for. Renault. We don't just make cars, we create cars. Ten's Late News with Natasha Belly. Tonight, good news and bad, wild storms, dust, bushfires, then rage on to cause havoc. Firefighters on the march in Melbourne, big crowds hail the heroes. And the RSL setting out to give this ad the chop. Good evening. First tonight, ferocious storms have lashed two states. Powerful winds and hailstones damaging hundreds of homes in northern New South Wales and Queensland. The storm first hit northern New South Wales towns, including Lismore, before punishing Merwillumbar and Kingscliff, crossing the border and slamming into Queensland's Sunshine Coast. More than 20,000 homes have been left without power, many losing their roofs as well. Emergency crews have been busy covering homes hit by massive hailstorms. You hear this pounding on the roof and these massive chunks of ice as big as a brick, honestly. We're just bouncing off the roof, landing in the backyard and just disintegrating there. Power lines and trees have come down over a wide area blocking roads. Volunteer services have received hundreds of calls for help and crews are expected to work throughout the night. 24 hours earlier, the storm tore through parts on the New South Wales south coast. But it had a blessing all but ending the bushfire crisis that had dragged on for 23 days. It was the most terrifying Christmas the state has ever seen. Dozens of bushfires raging out of control, Sydney surrounded by flame. 130 homes lost, families left with nothing. Now it seems it's all over. I can confidently say that the, the crisis nature of what we've been dealing with in the last 23 days uh, has abated considerably. An army of 20,000 firefighters took on the infernos at the height of the emergency. Now Mother Nature has lent a hand. A storm front overnight hit the south coast, Sydney, the Hawkesbury and the Hunter Valley, either extinguishing flames or taking the sting out of those uncontrolled. But the wet weather has come at a price. Lightning started a blaze that destroyed this two-storey house in the Blue Mountains. The home survived the bushfires only to succumb to an electrical storm. Although there's still three months of the fire season to go, authorities are breathing a sigh of relief. There's nothing but praise for the courageous firefighters who saved countless lives and property. And still more accolades for Elvis, the heli tanker, and his pilot, who says he's never seen such ferocious blazes in his career of international firefighting. Sean Fewings, 10 years. And a rousing salute in Melbourne, where an army of firefighters has paraded through the city. Thousands turning out to cheer the emergency crews who fought shoulder to shoulder at the front line of the New South Wales bushfire crisis. A river of orange winds through Melbourne's inner city. More than a thousand country firefighting volunteers greeted by warm sunshine and even warmer applause. Recognition for a job well done. A lot of people put a big effort in and yeah, a lot of disappointment we didn't put it out but we saved a lot of homes and I think it was a pretty good effort all around. Yeah. Some family members joined the procession, others lined the route with thousands of shoppers and workers taking time to cheer the firefighters on. And say thank you to the firefighters, they do a wonderful, fabulous job. I come down to uh, see my son march in the parade, very proud, very proud indeed. Some missed Christmas with their families, others sacrificed New Year's celebrations, so no one was going to stop this Mexican wave. Well, it's just fantastic that the people of Melbourne have come out today, supporting the CFA for the job they did in New South Wales, and we really appreciate it. Thanks, Melbourne. And Elvis made an encore appearance. Tributes also for those who couldn't be here today. Some Department of Natural Resources staff are still in Sydney. They're expected back later this week. It's great to get the recognition, but everybody put in, not just us. Those that stayed back put in as well. The only flames in sight, putting the sizzle into a well-deserved thank you barbecue. Max Futcher, 10 News. An ultimatum over the Australian being held captive for fighting alongside the Taliban. The Howard government's been told to charge David Hicks or the US will do it for us. This is what the 26-year-old Australian is now calling home. 
a two metre by two metre cage, no larger than a dog box, in a temporary US run camp in Cuba. If you want me quite frank, I don't have a lot of sympathy for Hicks. The United States has just charged its Taliban fighter. 20 year old John Walker Lind faces possible life in prison for conspiring to kill US nationals and supporting terrorists. John Walker Lind chose to fight with the Taliban, chose to train with Al Qaeda. And they're not keen to let Aussie David Hicks get off scot-free, but the Defence Minister is still reluctant to lay charges. But if it is such that he hasn't committed a, a, a breach of Australian law, then he's obviously not going to be tried in Australia for the breach of an Australian law. If it continues to drag its feet, there will be mounting pressure for the question to be resolved. And that could see the United States step in instead. Under either US law or to charge Hicks with any breaches of war crimes or crimes against humanity or acts of terrorism that they may believe that he's responsible for. Experts say Australia should push for immediate access rights to the prisoner to make sure he's being treated humanely and to gather evidence. If charged under US law, Hicks could face a secret military tribunal and at the very least life in prison and that means he may never come home. Sue Fitzpatrick, 10 News. Police continue their hunt for the pranksters who sent hoax anthrax mail to dozens of McDonald's restaurants, creating panic at stores across Sydney. Yesterday, emergency crews rushed to treat a nervous city manager. He was hurried to hospital, concerned about rashes that suddenly appeared after opening the mail. Most of the pages mailed had no writing and no threats were made. Police believe the blank letters were designed to scare staff. Big savings for patients with sexual dysfunction. The controversial Viagra pill is set to attract multi-million dollar taxpayer subsidies. Things are looking up for Viagra patients. Official recommendations that the so-called love drug be listed on the pharmaceutical benefits scheme, giving specific patients special subsidies. A course of four Viagra tablets normally costs around $70. That would fall to $3.60 for concession card holders if the controversial drug is listed and just over $22 for other patients. The cost to taxpayers could be as high as $100 million. Medical experts believe other drugs should be listed first. The problem is that if, you know, if one medication, doesn't matter what medication it is, gets listed, something else which is potentially life-saving uh, may miss out and that's, that's the problem. One such treatment not yet subsidised, nicotine replacement therapy. In defending the cost to taxpayers of subsidising the drug, the makers of Viagra argue that it will only be available to men with specific medical needs. Uh, diabetic patients, uh, men with spinal cord injury, uh, prostate surgery, prostate cancer. So it's an initiative which will target the use of the product to um, some very significantly deserving uh, medical groups in Australia. It's now up to the Federal Health Minister to decide if Viagra will be approved for listing. Evan Batten, 10 News. The RSL has gone into battle against a new TV ad aimed at beefing up meat consumption. Veterans outraged that it rewrites the national anthem and want it taken off air. From this, our national song, to this, what's for dinner? Right, the RSL isn't happy about. Well, when I first saw that last night, I, I was tempted to throw a brick through the TV, but the TV belongs to me, so I thought it was a rather costly way of showing my protest. I was disgusted, but I was also disappointed that um, someone would, would go to the lengths of, of promoting something and use one of what I believe is one of our icons. You know, we didn't set out to uh, uh, cause this reaction, uh, we were just seeking to have some fun. And Those behind the ad, Meat and Livestock Australia, say parroting our icon is something Australians take well to and are keen to remind traditionalists the music behind our anthem began life as a Welsh drinking song. Government legislation currently protects our flag and the word Anzac from being commercialised. Rusty Priest now wants that to cover our anthem as well, to prevent ads like this one from ever being made. I think it should be taken off straight away and whoever thought that up should, uh, should be taken away and given a lesson on uh, uh, national spirit. Uh, if we're, we, we believe that uh, the bulk of the community are against it, then we'll certainly withdraw it. But at this stage we don't have any plans to. 
Teachers Centre Hocking, 10 News. Stay with us till ahead in tonight's late news. Welfare cheats about to feel the heat. Also tonight, banks busted. Rampaging account holders refuse to withdraw. And out of control of court rules, we have to put up with a pest. An horrific accident on a major Sydney freeway this evening. Two people dead when a car slammed into a sandstone cliff face while heading into Sydney on the F3. The car was reduced to half its original size, engine and other car parts littering the roadway. The driver and passenger were killed instantly. Serial pest Peter Hoare has appeared in court only to have all charges against him dropped. The notorious menace vows he'll continue to crash or ruin important public events. Peter Hoare wasn't surprised that two charges of obstructing police and one of behaving in a disorderly manner were dropped. They threw today's out of court. Uh, they throw it out of court because they haven't got enough evidence against me. The offences related to his disruption of a Brisbane lingerie parade last August, during which he tried to tackle supermodel Sarah O'Hare. The serial pest was ordered to undergo medical tests after police successfully applied to have him kept in custody, fearing he could disrupt the Goodwill Games and Brisbane's ill-fated Chogham Summit. He's become notorious for invading major Australian events, such as the 1997 Melbourne Cup and the Australian Open tennis two years ago. He disrupted the funeral of singer Michael Hutchins and a sitting of the South Australian Parliament. It's now feared the publicity seeker will target the rescheduled Chogham meeting on the Sunshine Coast in March. Daniel Isdale, 10 News. Welfare cheats are about to face the music. In June, a new profiling technique will be used to identify would-be Centrelink fraudsters. Cracking down on welfare fraud has been the crusade of the Howard government since it came to office in 1996, but now new Family and Community Services Minister Amanda Vanstone is making it her personal campaign. From June, Centrelink officers will begin using profiling techniques to identify traits within welfare recipients that fit the profile of people who cheat. Really, we owe it to the working poor to spend their money extremely carefully. The profiling system will be in addition to methods already used by Centrelink to catch welfare cheats. These include using private investigators, cross-referencing welfare, taxation and other government records, as well as Centrelink's Dobbin website. People who have a history of casual work and irregular declared income will be in the spotlight. We can't afford for each of them to have, say, just $5 a week more. That would cost $10 billion in a budget period. But the federal opposition says Centrelink has less frontline fraud detection staff and is conducting 12 million less checks than it did six years ago. I certainly hope Senator Vanstone has more success in detecting welfare fraud than she had in chasing Christopher Scase. And the welfare sector is concerned the government is focusing on small crime while ignoring tax avoidance by corporate Australia. But you have to look at the um, expense and the effort that goes into actually retrieving that, this money in co compared with what is actually being lost at the other end of town. Jane Hinchke, 10 News. Wild scenes in Argentina, account holders attacking banks who've frozen their accounts. They've gone on a rampage destroying their local branches. The country's president last week ordered the banks to withhold their customers' money to help prop up his nation's crippled economy. He's now faced with a catch-22. If he leaves the restrictions in place, no one can spend. But if he eases them, people are likely to withdraw their money all at once, leading to total collapse of the financial system, a decision expected by the end of the week. America's most powerful unmanned rocket has blasted into space. One, we have ignition and liftoff of Titan IV B-38 carrying Milstar 5 into Earth orbit. Carrying a military satellite, the rocket took off without a hitch. The high-tech satellite should be operational within four months, increasing the speed of communications between military personnel across the globe. 
Now, a new shop in Thailand is offering the ultimate pampering experience for dogs. Inspired by gourmet pet food and indulgent grooming services, the doggy salon and spa business has opened, offering 45-minute massages for dogs. I found out um, for many years that uh, having dogs, they also love being massaged. And of course, every good massage includes a tubby tummy rub, but are they really working? Well, the dogs certainly don't appear to be complaining. Next in 10 News, a woman thrown off a bus for breastfeeding her baby. Also tonight, equine escapee, the horse that dropped in for a dip. And in sports tonight, Australian cricket selectors bury the hatchet with Shane Warne. He You're watching 10 News. A breakthrough at a Sydney hospital is set to save thousands of lives. It's a test that dramatically improves a patient's outlook after surgery. For the first time, doctors can see a fatty blockage on a patient's lung. A healthy lung shows up as mainly black, but a fatty blockage looks orange. There's speckling in both lungs, as you can see here. The blockage created after marrow and fat from a broken bone enters the veins. It's not just simply showers of fat going up into the lungs. Great gobs of it can go up as well, and it is indistinguishable from blood clots on the lung. The result was patients wrongly receiving blood thinning drugs, and in 1% of cases, major internal bleeding and even death. Dr Van der Waal came up with the test using a drug that's been around for 40 years, but it was Dr Warwick Bruce's idea to spot the fat and, as a result, treat it properly. And it's like putting uh, sugar in a motor it clogs up the small blood vessels so oxygen from the lungs can't get into the patient's blood adequately. That meant dizziness, confusion and breathlessness after surgery. Every year up to 30,000 Australians like Beryl Barrett have a knee or hip replacement or surgery to fix a broken leg. I had a full joint replacement on the other leg five years ago but I was much longer recovering from that operation. There's a 100% success rate for the 70 people who've been tested so far. Hospitals around the nation and then the world are being shown how to detect the fat using existing scanning machines. Kevin Wilde, 10 News. Commuter outrage, a young mother claiming she was kicked off a bus for breastfeeding. Perth mum Julie Washer claims she was left little choice by the driver's demands. He basically told me that... Um, there's no eating and drinking on the bus and I had to either continue, stop feeding her or get off. And because she's hungry, I had to get off. The bus company says it's shocked by the claim and will look into her allegations. Emergency crews are baffled by the cause of a potentially deadly chemical leak south of Brisbane. Four workers were taken to hospital after being overcome by the mystery fumes wafting up from a factory floor. Vomiting and visibly ill, one by one workers at the Computer Road factory fell victim to the mystery gas. We're working in there and um, it all started smoking up from the floor. Five male staff were overcome by the noxious fumes. Four of those were treated at the scene by ambulance officers before being transported to Logan Hospital. The uh, patients have inhaled some sort of substance which have caused them some problems. They've suffered some respiratory related problems, some nausea and vomiting. Police quickly sealed off surrounding streets. I'll just ask you all to stay over there, thank you. Firefighters dressed in chemical splash suits entered the building. They used an air monitoring device to determine what gas was present. We don't have any idea at this stage. The previous occupier of the building has used certain chemicals in there which don't seem to pose any particular threat. The new tenants, a beer fridge manufacturing firm, had only just taken over the plant. Staff were moving shelves into a room when they became ill. It's still unclear what gas oozed out of the concrete or what reaction occurred to make that happen. Investigations are ongoing. The four staff admitted to hospital are expected to make a full recovery. John Flynn, 10 News. Now to finance news and a slight gain for the share market. The All, all Ordinary is lifting 18 points. It was a good day for the banks. The NAB, Commonwealth and ANZ all enjoyed large gains. Westfield shares fell after yesterday's big rise and Brambles lost 22 cents. The Aussie dollar is buying 51.46 US cents, 35 pence, 67 yen and 58 euro cents. Gold is trading at $288.10 US an ounce. 
Joining us now is Tom Petrovsky from Commonwealth Securities. Now, good news, Tom, on consumer confidence. That's right, Natasha. A survey released today showed that Australian consumers aren't afraid of reaching into their pockets and spending a few dollars, which is one of the reasons that the economy is in such good shape. The only problem being it might be one of the reasons that the Reserve Bank may not cut interest rates when it meets in February. Now, I understand all eyes are on the US tonight. Yeah, that's right. Uh, markets are desperately trying to work out the timing of a US recovery, and there's some key data being released tonight that may make that a little bit clearer. So it'll be worth keeping an eye on this, Natasha, to see how it influences our market tomorrow morning. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom Petrovsky, joining us from Comsec. A wayward horse has made a big splash in northern Queensland. The mare rescued by crane from a backyard pool. They say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Not so for 20-year-old Townsville Mayor Shemita. Somehow whether he was looking for a drink that he's found his way into the pool, and because of the steps being as steep as they are, he's unable to climb out. Shemita took the unexpected dip, much to the surprise and anguish of her owner, who thought she was safe inside her property fence. I've had it since she was two. I don't want anything. I don't even want to scratch on it. Emergency crews and RSPCA were rushed to the horse's side, but getting Shemita high and dry was harder than it seemed. We've had cats and we've had dogs and birds and things like that, but not a horse at this day. First bales of hay were submerged to make steps, but each time floated to the top. Finally, a local crane company came to the rescue. Shemita given a tranquilizer, then slowly lifted out. So shaken, the beloved mare survived her ordeal with little more than a few cuts and bruises. Belinda Russell, 10 News. Stay with us, the weather's next, and then it's Sports Tonight with Tim Webster. Natasha, thank you. Matt Rogers and Wendell Saylor get their first Aussie rugby jumpers, stage two of the Tour Down Under, and the Scud misfires at the Australian Open. This weather report proudly brought to you by UV Triple Guard. Now to the national weather and cloud over parts of New South Wales and Queensland, causing severe thunderstorms and heavy showers as a trough moves through. Storm clouds are also building over WA. The synoptic shows a belt of high pressure, keeping southern Australia mostly dry. So today, possible showers for Cairns, the chance of a storm in Brisbane, clearing showers in Sydney, possible showers in Canberra, sunny in Melbourne, possible showers in Hobart, sunny in Adelaide, a storm in Perth, late thunder for the top end and sunny in the red centre. And that brings you up to date with the latest news. Stay with us now for Sports Tonight with Tim Webster. I'm Natasha Belling. Thank you for your company.